So in this episode, we're talking about our trip to Riyadh, um, where we went and we saw some of our clients. So Didi, this was your very first trip to Saudi. What were you worried about before going? Or were you worried at all? So it was definitely my first trip uh, to Saudi Arabia. Like I know about the culture in the region, especially in Saudi Arabia. Was I worried? No. Like, did I know what to expect? Not really. So we just went with the flow since we landed. So we flew with Saudia, which is the, the airline of Saudi Arabia, the service was absolutely great and you can agree uh, on that and I mean we had the best service ever we even had ice cream on the plane which I don't know about you but I never had ice cream on the plane and then when we landed we actually were very lucky the airport was not that busy and then actually the um, even through customs everyone was very helpful even the officers smiled and said welcome to Saudi so it was really a great start of the experience and then when you ask me where you were I think this is why we're here this is why we're doing this podcast there is nothing to be worried about when when you go to Saudi Arabia and we are here to help to show the real Saudi Arabia through our experience so it was definitely an amazing experience I do think, though, there is a lot of people that know uh, um, everything they know about Saudi just from the media. And, and they think, especially women, they're really worried, you know, can we go there? Do we need a chaperone? Does, um, are they, you know, are they going to harass us or something? I mean, the, these are questions that, that very often come up. And I mean, what was your experience like? Well, I felt very, very safe. Like no one harassed us. No one has spoken to us. Actually, we were really helped while we were going to see one of our clients and we were lost with, um, you know, like we didn't know where to go. We asked for help. And one of the most important things that people should know that is not to take for granted that everyone speaks English in Saudi Arabia, where if you go in another country, like you may think, oh, how I'm gonna try to ask for you know, direction. So you are safe when it comes to speaking the same language. So you don't have to speak Arabic. I mean, um, for me, one of the most um, interesting things we went to was uh, Riyadh Boulevard, because obviously I hadn't been there, but it hadn't actually been there even like a year ago. Um, it was probably much smaller than what it was when, when we went. But my God, wasn't this a revelation? It was definitely mind blowing. Like, we didn't know what to expect. Like once we walk through those gates, you're like, wow, this is next level. Like I like to say, because it was a city in the city. Once you were inside, you actually didn't know you wouldn't expect what we've seen. Like you can always see it like, okay, in the social media, we've seen it in the, um, on the TV, but the Riyadh season is just something never seen before. Um, like we saw, uh, we actually were very lucky because someone shows, showed us around. So we were really privileged to have the entire tour of, of the Riyadh season, but it's basically mind blowing because the progress that they made to create such a thing, which if you agree, it's just something that we never seen before, starting from, you have everything inside from the theater, kids entertainment, you have the top notch restaurants inside. And then of course the beautiful Fountain show, which is the bigger, the better. So I don't know if you think it's definitely not Mm, the same caliber that we've seen in Dubai so what, what was your impression I think yeah I think it's very different um to Dubai I also felt like some areas were very traditional you know like you had very traditional Saudi restaurants which I think is nice it's not just to bring another restaurant from Europe into that area like you you honor the traditions you had these beautiful music halls I think where they had Arabic artists um, performing. So I think that was really great. I mean, I think my highlight, totally my highlight was 
Times Square Riyadh, I think if you want to call it like that. But that was brilliant. And I didn't even know there were two parts to it. And we went to both parts and our host really made sure we actually did go and see both parts because um, he was he was just so proud to show us around. And it was just such a great experience. Um, it was really, really nice. And the highlight was the bananas as well. Do you want to share the banana story? Oh my God, this banana story. Honestly, this was just so crazy, wasn't it? Like when we were on the way to Riyadh Boulevard, we just see this car pulling up and there's this red massive banana, which looks like a um, like one of these sort of toy or these soft toys. And we're like, who has a banana like this in the car? How random. And then when we got to Riyadh Boulevard, we understood it was, oh, this was the thing that you could win. And there were like literally bananas everywhere. And they also had different colors. And I think our host said every week they had a different color. And um, we took loads of pictures because they were everywhere. But it, yeah, was, that was it, was my, it was my highlight, like everyone holding very proudly the banana and carrying the bananas around was definitely one of my highlights. And the other highlight was actually we when we were there, there were like these people dressed like um, the Squid Game from the Netflix. Um, oh, yes. Theory, which was actually quite mind blowing because I think they outside there was like kind of you can actually have the Squid Game experience in um, in Riyadh, just outside Riyadh season. So it was something I think it's only in three places in the world. So it was actually interesting to see that. I mean, they, cer they certainly, everything that was hot and new and that was of interest to people was, de was definitely there. So what would you say was your favorite part in Riyadh? food i have to say my favorite part was food i'm such a food lover and i think there is a way to discover the culture and tradition is definitely through food so we actually were very lucky to um, be invited to our client's house so they opened their doors to us and they made us try everything from let's say the traditional arabic Saudi uh, menu so the Saudi cu cu cuisine so was actually very interesting to try different um, like dishes from different traditions and different regions from the um, from the Saudi actually what do you think yes I agree and do you remember one of the clients even sent us the traditional Saudi dessert to the hotel in like I this know. massive in this massive pot it was like a sort of like a rice with dates it was so sweet but it was way more than we could ever eat I think we put on so much weight on this trip it was just crazy yeah we both start diet after the trip that's for sure <laughs> yeah So what was it like? I mean, obviously you've been dealing with Saudi clients before, but what was it like to see them in their home country? Well, just well, for me, it was just very interesting as I know them from London, but, but to see them uh, back home in their own country was just amazing. First of all, they opened their houses for us. They really invited us in their own home. Like who would ever do that in the Western world? Like would ever someone invite a client to their home for dinner, introduce them to their family? Well, let me answer that. I don't think so. So it's something that really happened while we were there. We were introduced to the kids, to the wives. So it was really interesting to see that that kind of relation that you can build once you are there and they really like trust you and give you, you know, show, they showed us like where they live, doesn't get any better than that, I think.
yeah yeah i totally agree it's uh, but it also like gives you such a good insight in how they live i mean the houses were so different like uh, um we were at one place which was sort of they called it like the farm but i think it was a bit more like a holiday home which is was a it was not inside way out it was a little bit uh further out and it had more like a farm style feel a very rustic feel and then we were at another house which was so modern and there was so much art i mean like you couldn't the contrast was just so fascinating i thought so it's something that really gave us a bigger picture for me personally because you've been there before like a better picture of our client that's absolutely what happened yeah absolutely and it's it's just it's just a really good good insight um for people and to me it you know even after all these years i am still you know in awe of the generosity the generosity of their time of you know that they um that they're so hospitable and and they really like let you in and you know and very often you just don't meet the family you meet the cousin the friend you know the grandmother maybe i mean it's just amazing like i i could not think of a place in Europe where this would happen. So to me, that's very special. And I think it also shows how much trust they have um, when they get to know you. This definitely like no one I think would ever invite a Saudi or a Middle Eastern person that comes to London to their home, like at the first time, like at the first time they meet them or just like during their stay, something that doesn't really happen every day in, in, in London, for example, that's absolutely, um that's not the case for sure so now let's talk a little bit about um dress code because obviously we were we were both wearing the abaya not because we had to but we just felt it was more respectful and it was very interesting while we were there um there was a little bit of controversy going on because we posted a picture and where we um, were wearing the abaya or you posted that and then somebody really took offense to it somebody actually not Middle Eastern saying um, you know you're really misre misrepresenting the country and you should really not wear an abaya and we were really taken back by that because we didn't actually really see anybody who wasn't wearing an abaya I mean not in your traditional sense that you had to be veiled but it was very much like you know, it was like a fashion statement because it wasn't just like a black abaya. I mean, they came in all sorts of shapes and designs and yeah, I mean, it was just really strange <laughs> that's got that so comment let's start, let's start from the point the, from the fact that things have changed in Saudi Arabia like if you think of a buyer you should stop thinking that it's all the women dressed in black no 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 no. fashion has changed their buyers they're beautiful they're like dresses and you can mix and match you can wear what you want and the the the, the thing that I want to really point is the fact that now it's a choice so you can wear the abaya or not wear the abaya. We wanted to wear the abaya, first of all, because we love it. It's easy. It's one piece. You just put it on and you're ready. It's fashionable and it's just comfortable as well. And at the same time, you respect the culture because let's not forget that the culture comes with the abaya, let's say. So you, no, you don't have to wear it, but if you do... That's definitely, you know, the, it's it's a nice way to showcase like the culture in Saudi Arabia. So yeah, the fa I've, I've posted that picture actually, and this person actually said, he his words were like, this is a slap on the women's mm, something, something like, anyway, it was a really bad comment that really threw me back. And I was like, oh my God, like, this is like, how do I explain this? And he was, and he was like, well, what do you, like, I advise my clients not to wear one. Then again, we go back to, it is a choice. So if your clients, if your um, people who visit um, Saudi want to wear one, that's a choice. They can wear one if they want to, that's culture. So you should not advise not to wear one because that's controversy on the two choices. So anyway, so I was like, 
Okay, so we were sitting, remember, we were at our client's house, we were sitting and they were um, the young um, daughter sitting with us. I was like, let me ask the question. So I've turned around and asked the questions like, so this, what, this is what happened. What do you think? Like, do you feel offended if I were an abaya? And would you not wear an abaya? And they were like, well, no, we love our culture. Like, this is us, this is Saudi. We will always wear an abaya. And we love the fact that you both, me and you wear one because it really represents the country. And that's, that's all, this, that's all I needed to know and to hear from someone that is from Saudi and does not feel offended by us wearing an abaya. I mean, totally. And, you know, to me, I always think like you compare this to like when you go to a church in Europe, like you you wouldn't go in there in like a mini skirt and a crop top because it would just not be appropriate. And I think this is the same thing. So respecting the culture doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you feel oppressed or whichever. I mean, it's, it's just something that you do in order to show respect to the people. And when he said that, actually, we really were looking out for someone who did not wear one. And like, I don't know about you, but I haven't seen anyone not wearing an abaya. So I don't know where did he get all the information because I don't know. Uh, and it's it's like we said you know like they're very fashionable now they have lots of different patterns and designs and they're just actually a really versatile garment I, I really think that you could probably even wear some of them in London and people wouldn't necessarily know it's an abaya it's just like a fashion statement almost I agree 100%. They're all like colorful, colorful. And as you said, different designs. And I would definitely wear mine in London for sure. Yeah. And something else that we remember from Riyadh is this um, white coffee, which is basically, uh, so we had it at our house, at our client's house. So they were like, would you like some white coffee? And we were like, I was like, wow, I love coffee and I would love to try this white coffee. So it's not coffee for sure. It's basically uh, warm, like boiling, um, boiled water with rose water and was the most, I don't know, delicious drink I ever drank because it was like drinking a perfume and I think it's a digestive as well. So it just, it's something that I will always remember from my trip yeah. in Saudi, that's for sure. It was, I mean, it was really amazing. I mean, for me, I think the highlight was we went to this restaurant, if you remember, called um, Suhail, which was a very traditional um, Saudi restaurant. And it was just so beautifully done with these wooden palm trees. And then the food came in these beautiful stone bowls. I mean, it was everything about it was just really amazing. It was, and the concept was great. Uh, I think the head chef is a very successful woman um, and her concept was just amazing. So basically, basically she created these um, Michelin star dishes based on um, Saudi cuisine culture and the different regions of the country. So it was definitely a must try. So we basically visited the whole Saudi just by trying the dishes. So it was definitely- Very <laughs> true, very true. So do you have any advice to give anyone who wants to go to Saudi? What would you say to them? So I will definitely tell them if you have any beliefs in your head, like negative beliefs, just leave them outside of your head, of your head, pack your bag, get the right knowledge. Like you have to know about the culture, about what you have to do and not to do, and just go and experience the country. Because I really think as I think they call it the, um, the rising giant, Saudi Arabia, if I'm not mistaken. So basically, 
things are moving fast in Saudi. People don't know that. And if they don't know that, they should really be curious about it because Saudi will be the future. So it's the right time now to go and experience, um, get there, experience Saudi, the real Saudi. And then, because otherwise we'll be too late in the future. Now is the right moment to just pack your bag, book an hotel, like get advice from, from people that have been there like us. You can like text us or like, if you're not sure, I mean, the visa to get the visa, it took me four minutes where before you had to get invited and you know, like so many paperwork, so much paperwork. So it is easy. So if someone tells you don't go to Saudi because it's not safe or it's so hard to get there, well, let me tell you, they really don't want you to see Saudi because Saudi is a must see. So if you like this episode um, and you like what you heard, please do share it with a friend like give us the ratings subscribe to our podcast and we really aim to bring you a lot of value and all the interesting things we learn about the middle east and for now see you the next time